weight disparity there. Holyfield 184 and a half, Moody 192, and a two and a half inch reach advantage for Holyfield. Alex, how do you see this fight going? Well, I think, Al, that uh, Holyfield is just uh, too strong and too quick for Moody. Uh, I would expect him to uh, put pressure on from the opening bell, try to relax, try to pace himself. His trainer, Lou Duva, and uh, George Benton, the other co-trainers, have been trying to work to get Evander's defense better. He is easy to hit. Sometimes he concentrates so much on his offense that he forgets to move his head. So I think a thing to watch for in this fight is, uh, it, has Evander improved his defensive ability uh, enough to be able to challenge for a world title? Allowed and a boisterous and obviously a partisan crowd. I think you could hear the strains of Born in the USA as the backdrop for our scene set, as has been the case with all of the Olympians. So many fans have followed their professional careers. They've been greeted warmly, toasted wherever they've been, and here we go. As Evander Holyfield tries to stay unbeaten, tries to increase his record to nine victories and no defeats against Moody, who is a reported 28-5 and five with two draws. Holyfield has shown exceptional boxing skills, good improvement, good power, stamina. He's proven he can go the distance. We saw him go eight rounds in July against Tyrone Booz. This one is scheduled for 10th. One of the problems we had coming in, uh, Evander had coming into his professional career, Al, were some doubts about his ability to go around. Uh, his trainers put him through uh, early in his career, professional career, uh, an eight round training session with two and a half minute rounds to give him, without telling him, to give him the feeling that he could in fact go eight three minute rounds. And uh, that got him over the hump. He has shown, as you said, uh, thus far the ability uh, to go uh, eight rounds and uh, it's necessary to go ten or more. He's not starting out as quickly as he has in the past. And part of that of being dictated right now by Moody. More of a feeling out process than we have seen in the first rounds of other Holyfield fights in his brief pro career. Halfway through round one in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Holyfield trying to hit, get inside with that combination. But Moody effectively blocking most everything Holyfield has thrown at this point in round one, but he did land that right hand. That right uppercut that uh, Evander landed a few seconds ago, Al, would be a good weapon for him to try again. Uh, Moody is open right up the middle. And a left followed by a right hand as he has Moody backing up. Round one, scheduled for 10. See Holyfield trying, trying that jab. Duva and Benton, his trainers, want him to work behind the jab. He's gotten a little bit KO conscious, and he's forgotten the jab, which was a very powerful weapon for him as an amateur. They want him to get the range with the jab and then let his combinations go. He follows a couple of jabs with a good right hand and another right hand. Another right scoring here in the waning seconds of round one. Under 10 seconds to go in the first of his scheduled 10 rounder. An impressive finish for round one for Evander Holyfield. We're back, the referee in this fight, Tony Wolf. Judges are Carol Polis, Rudy Battle, and Albert Morris, scoring by the three judges. The ref does not have a voice in the decision. Five-point must system. Remember that here in Pennsylvania, five-point must. Standing eight count at the referee's discretion. Doctor can stop the fight at any time. And the three knockdown rule is in effect. Three times down in the round and you're finished. Holyfield, who had a good spurt early in round one and finished strong in round one. In the second round now against Shasan Damuti, originally from Zambia, now fighting out of Dusseldorf, West Germany. And tomorrow, more action from this same ring on our pro boxing series at 3 Eastern time. Mark Breland will attempt to stay unbeaten as he will be in action, taking on Richard Aguirre.
Holyfield taking his time. He's really waiting for Moody to punch, trying to create some opportunities for himself. He might try to move side to side to create his own angle to land punches. Put the right hand into the body. So right there, Holyfield is too close to the opponent. He needs to step back, get his range, and then let his combination go. He let the left hand go and tries to work inside with that right uppercut. And lands a decent right there as well. If he's vulnerable in any one area, Alex, have you noticed any one area in which uh, Moody might have a chance to win this fight? Well, if I were a, an opponent or a trainer for a fighter who's going to go going to be in the Holyfield, you'd have to find a way to stay away from his power. Uh, and the best way to do that is to jab, keep him out uh, outside, keep him out of his punching range, and move. Just don't let him set himself. Try to back him up. Try to move, set, move, set. But uh, Moody, while he's, he's durable, you can see that he doesn't move that much. He stands there, and you can't stand in front of Evander Holyfield and expect to win. Not for very long. Second round action. Well, Final half minute of round two. Vander Holyfield, 8-0 as a professional with five knockouts. The bronze medalist in the light heavyweight division at the 1984 Olympics under most unusual circumstances. But a man who has made solid and steady progress as a pro and hopeful of gaining a title shot. End of the second round at hand. round now in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Al Michaels reporting with Alex Wallow, Evander Holyfield in the white trunks against Shasanda Moody in the black trunks in a 10-round cruiserweight confrontation. Moody, the British Commonwealth cruiserweight champion, and Holyfield, who is now ranked 10th by the WBC in this division and 8th by the IBF, a little more than a year into his pro career. And again, Evander Holyfield with a title shot imminent if he wins this one. Then later this month, Dwight Muhammad Kwawi meets Leon Spinks for the WBA Junior Heavyweight Championship, roughly the equivalent of this division in the WBC. And the winner of that fight would meet Holyfield for the title, probably in uh, June or July. Field. tries to come in with a right back of the left and does a couple of left hooks another right hand and Moody in danger Moody absorbing another right hand Moody backing up Holyfield still stalking him Moody for the moment weathering that brief storm but another good right hand got in between the leather you see the durability here of Moody. He's not the kind of fighter, traditionally, who has been able to be knocked out with one punch. You have to put punches together like Holyfield has done right there, and this fight is over. It should be. That's the knockdown here in round three, and the referee signaling an end without even beginning the count. Tony Wolf, knowing that Moody was in desperate trouble, he was hung up against the ropes. And that enabled Holyfield to get in a couple of extra punches, and that spelled the end for Shasanda Moody in this scheduled 10-rounder. So Moody comes across the ocean to Lancaster, Pennsylvania, to accept this confrontation with Holyfield and winds up flat on his back as Evander takes a step toward a title shot with an impressive third-round knockout victory over Shasanda Moody. Evander Holyfield now with a mark of 9 and 0, oh, 6 knockouts. We want to alert our local stations. We will be taking a station break for you momentarily. Moody has gotten up. They have put him on the stool. And we'll take a look at the replay of the knockout. Third round. An accumulation of punches, really. The right hand there was the one that did the, the final damage that put Moody over the ropes. Referee moves in there. Maybe a punch late. Takes Holyfield away. And as you said, Al doesn't even bother to count fights over 
So Holyfield is the winner, and we'll be back with more of ABC's Wide World of Sports right after this word from your local station.